I'm not sure you will hear that, but the real squeeze uh, for NATO is a, a squeeze from the inside. Uh, yes, there are crises on the outside, uh, Belarus, uh, Eastern Mediterranean crisis, but fundamentally NATO is squeezed from the inside because some of the big members, United States, Turkey, France, are actually not seeing eye to eye. And, and in case of France and Turkey, we are uh, ex witnessing, I think, some kind of escalation in Eastern Mediterranean. So I think the real political conversation between uh, Jens uh, Stoltenberg and Chancellor Merkel will be more about how do we solve these, these political issues between our member states. Belarus clearly in the headlines too and the United States uh, has been having conversations about some of the unrest we're seeing there on the back of the election but this is a critical part of the geographical picture if you think about the buffer that it provides between Europe and Russia what type of position could we expect Germany and the rest of NATO to take on Belarus? Well, NATO as an organization should not take a very proactive position in order not to escalate the situation, because that's exactly what Moscow and Lukashenko will be, will be waiting for, to justify uh, a repression of the, of the protests by saying that NATO is somehow getting in the conflict and so on. So I think NATO has to stay much more on the back seat and let the EU and the European member states uh, take some, some, I think, clearer measures, starting with sanctions of those people who have helped the regime to actually do an electoral fraud. Fabrice, is it arguable, uh, no, let me put it another way. Can one argue with the US president that Germany is consistently failing to match its obligations, is actually pontificating when it should be spending money, is significantly below 2% when they've promised it by some time in the early 2030s. I can't help thinking that Frau Merkel is such a successful politician, but on this issue, uh, she has kicked it into the long grass and continues to do so. Absolutely. And this is where uh, sometimes we have to agree with uh, the US president that indeed Germany is not at the level it should be. It's uh, actually just below 1.5% of defense spending on GDP instead of 2%. And Germany is really the big swing state of European defense spending. So as long as Germany stays below what it should do, uh, European defense is not going to punch at its weight. However, I think this is one, one, one issue. On the other hand, Germany is also playing, you know, across the board, important role, including on holding sanctions on Russia following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So it's not just about defense spending. It's also about what you do on the kind of broader foreign policy front. And, and finally, I think the U.S. partial withdrawal uh, from Germany and redeployment to some other NATO countries is obviously a symbolically a big hit for, for Germany. But I think fundamentally, uh, it's not, uh, you know, no longer as important to have tens of thousands of U.S. troops deploy in Germany. So I think the symbol is there and it hurts, but the operational reality is not necessarily that bad. Let me ask you, I guess, maybe the big question that a lot of people stateside are questioning, given the president's protestations over the last couple of years, is the North Atlantic Treaty Organization fit for purpose? I think uh, it is fit for purpose as far as dealing with external crisis is concerned. NATO has shown that it has responded, I think, quite clearly and robustly to uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine by totally changing its posture in, in Central Europe. However, uh, politically, so on the inside, there's a real question mark here. And I would not be surprised if, for example, uh, an important country like France, an important member of the alliance, uh, declares by the end of the year that it no longer sees its membership of NATO as something as important because basically there are other members like Turkey who actually uh, have interests that are uh, totally clashing with, with the alliance. So I think on the inside there's a real political crisis simmering and I don't know if the election of a new US president, uh, Joe Biden, if it was the case, will really fundamentally solve that. Fabrice, I want to ask you about coronavirus because Jens Stoltenberg a couple of months ago said it should not become a security crisis, but some, clearly some concerns around uh, vaccines, the, the fight that's taken place globally for those vaccines, the handling of the COVID-19 crisis in some countries versus others, and also in particular around this EU recovery fund, just what type of governance needs to take place in some European countries if they're going to have access to those European funds. So how could this play out and have security ramifications for NATO? Well, 
vaccine nationalism is obviously something quite uh, worrying because in the end we are all in this crisis so we should all get out of the crisis together uh, so that's one thing on the security front i think the real concern at nato is whether defense budgets who have been on the increase since 2014 uh, will have another squeeze uh, and we will fall into a, what we can call a defense recession. And this specter will be really problematic for NATO since it was just recovering from decades of cuts and getting the US to look at NATO as something maybe more reliable than, than in the past. So I, I think this is the real worry at NATO is that priorities will shift, will put more money into public health, and even on security, there will be more money for what we call resilience than for traditional defense capabilities.